Silhouette. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Complexity Casting. Han Tour Cycle 3, Winner's Round 2, Best of 3, Game 3. Let's do it right here. One Trick Pony evens up the series in Game Number 2 against Stay Green Swindle. Going for the highly aggressive strategy featuring Torture, Witch Slayer, Fade, a couple supports. And uh, unfortunately, it just did not pan out. They were not able to get the kills that they needed to take the game into late. And of course, on the other team, they were able to get the farmed War Beast and Silhouette. So, just like that, games even, series even. Game three going to decide who is moving on to the winter semifinals and who is going home. Who's going to be, well, not going home. <laughs> who's going into the loser's bracket might as well be home because there you're just two games away from being done. And neither of these teams, of course, want to do that. So let's get on into this game, guys. Cole cast me, casting goes beef. Let's do it. Blind Panic Phase, Keeper of the Forest, and Wild Soul. Wild Soul and Tundra. So the Legion team actually choosing to ban out Keeper of the Forest rather than the Hellborn this time. Interesting, interesting. But neither player or neither team wants Keeper of the Forest or Wild Soul in the game. And of course, Tundra being uh, taken out as well. Leaving in some of the carries and the gankers, though. We'll see who gets locked. Here in the lock picking phase, we do have first lock, Glacius, Pebbles, and Tempest follow it up. We have Ophelia, Parasite, and they finished out with Fade. So we'll see if uh, One Trick Pony gives Stay Green Fade for the third time in a row. Swindle's had a fantastic fade day thus far, and uh, I would not mess with that. If I were One Trick Pony, I would let him know, nope, you can't have that by first picking that themselves. We shall see in just a second here. The uh, blind or the standard banning phase, it's Jerezai, Draconis, Zephyr, Warbeast, Moon Queen, and... Plague Rider being banned out. So a couple of the carries making it through once again, but the big ones, Draconis and Moon Queen, as well as Zephyr being banned out. Warbeast, we've seen him in both of the first two games, going to be banned here, not make it into the lock pool. But banned, first pick coming out, it is Silhouette. So going with the strong hard carry there as I hit the wrong button. Engineer and Bubbles are the response from Stay Green. Swoon Bones going with his strong support, and then uh, a Suicide player right away. Back for number four and five with One Trick Pony. They, in fact, go for a Luna Pharaoh. So grab a support of their own in addition to the Glacius that they just last picked out of the lock right there. And then Pharaoh. So they're going to be able to pick up a Suicide Hero along with the... Um, what am I talking about? Pebbles. Pebbles is the fifth player there for OTP. Rounding it out with another strong initiator, Pharaoh and Pebbles. Both going to be able to get some good initiation in the mid game. Similar strategy to what they ran in the last game. Strewfooter going to be going for suicide. Middle lane is going to be a Luna with the uh, Pebbles, most likely. Could be Iglesias there instead of a Luna. And then, of course, the long lane, most likely going to be Pharaoh with the uh, Luna or Glacius. But they could also offensive tri lane. This is another possibility here. Let's get this scene changed up real quick. Uh, the offensive tri-lane would actually be able to go into the jungle and harass out the Tempest a little bit. It's also going to be able to try to slow down Wretched Hank's farm just a bit. And Pharaoh should still be able to get good levels there in the middle lane. Pharaoh's not a hero that you put in a dual lane situation very often because he does need levels so desperately. So we'll see. If they go for the offensive try, I think that's going to be their better option. And that might very well be what they do. Of course, putting the Aluna in a little bit of a roaming position will enable her to try to still have an impact against Fade and Engineer here in the middle lane. By the way, Fade was picked up by Stay Green for the third game in a row. Swindlemon says, man, I love this hero. And gets it for himself yet again. In the end, it looks like Pharaoh is going to be... What are they doing? <coughs> Excuse me. I've got the hiccups again, guys. Blame it on a lack of sleep. I was up too late being excited about Han Tour. I didn't fall asleep until like 3 in the morning. So even though I'm not tired, my body's mad at me. And it's like, hey, Beef, have the hiccups. Try lane for now in the middle lane. 
as uh, Pebbles, Aluna, and Glacius are all going to be hanging out. Maybe see if they can score a first blood on to fade and they will be looking for that there's the slagmites on to fade auto attack should come in there there's the power throw thunder blast comes in nice burning shadows and wow a perfect keg right there and not able to secure the last hit on to fade that would have been big for the one trick pony team unfortunate they weren't able to get as a result glaciers will be rotating into the top lane empty-handed and uh, with nothing to show for wasting the early portion of his laning presence they're gonna actually get a luna right here the auto attacks are coming in need one more down she goes even with the health potion a luna takes the fall so well done well done to the stay green team catching her out of position a beautiful burning shadows followed up with a well-placed keg and down she goes Bubbles in the bottom lane. Going to be going one-on-one -on -one against Silhouette. Tempest gave him a little bit better lane position just as a result of that early deny. Because that Keizu's getting some uh, decent experience down here. But in terms of last hits, certainly going to be struggling against Silhouette. Eight and zero Silhouette to three and one Bubbles. Eventually the lane will push up again in Silhouette's favor and then uh, Bubbles will start going to have... Oh my god, I'm so sorry, guys. They're going to start to have a real bad time. I I got to learn how to get rid of pickups better. As uh, Engineer, actually, with a very nice keg and uh, turret right there, doing a lot of damage to Aluna. Oh, trying to drink a bunch of water. Death Lotus is unfortunately not going to connect, and KZ is manning up right here against Zibby. Middle lane, though. Pebbles goes with the Stalagmites. Nice keg dodge. Power Throw still going to connect. Swindlebones just chugs his bottle, though. He'll be able to get back up to full, no problem. In the top, top lane, Wretched Hag taking some pressure. Trying to maybe turn it around onto Glacius. Archer Tiger needs to be very careful here. One more auto attack and a Sonar Scream will actually kill him. In the end, not going to connect with that last auto attack in Sonar Scream, but no big deal. Trying to get rid of these hiccups, guys. Not working. A nice combo. Oh, they're on to uh, fade, but no, they turn it around and Pebbles will go down. Swindle balance. Looking strong so far in the middle lane. 306 go gold per minute. Fade and Luna kind of running back and forth here along the river. Looking for uh, something to bottle up. In fact, there is a rune at the top. Combo going to be going out on a fade, and fade will fall. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I had to mute my mic th for a second because I was choking on water. <laughs> In the end, uh, Engineer trying to camp out that Invis rune. Perhaps did a little bit more harm than good. Left his teammate uh, a little bit vulnerable to a gank and down Swindlebones did go. The Invis rune going to be useful so that he can get a little bit of scouting information, but only with enough mana for one of his two spells. I would suspect the level 2 turret could be used here relatively soon. Level 5 silhouette in the bottom lane. Half-Life could be the target of choice. For this level 6 bubbles with the invisible engineer. And where's the kelp field? Uh, not using it yet. There it is. Shell Surf going to actually spot out Glacius as well. 
And they might be able to have enough auto attacks here to kill Glacius. There's the Song of the Sea. One more auto attack and down goes Archer Tiger. <laughs> Excuse me. So there you go. Archer Tiger takes a fall and stay green off to a fantastic start. The small thing of uh, swapping around their their lanes just a, a little bit, perhaps, and uh, one of the burning shadows goes in there. As Pebbles drops his stalagmites, power throw comes in as well. No Chuck is available. There's the uh, Tundra Blast. A couple more auto attacks would have actually killed Fade. It's in the bottom lane, Silhouette uh, doing some damage to Bubbles. In comes the burning shadows, Cole, and down goes Archer Tiger once once. His second death of the game, and four players here in the middle lane, three players, excuse me, in the middle lane for Stay Green, trying to secure a kill onto uh, Luna, perhaps. They should have seen... <laughs> okay. Okay, one second, guys. All right, back into this game. Sorry about the uh, interruption distraction there. Glaciers and Pebbles still trying to find farm in the middle lane, but 219 gold per minute Pebbles. Uh, simply not working out just yet, as opposed to the 275 per minute gold gold per minute on Fade. Oh, that's a Void coming out here in the top lane. Stroopiter takes the Bat Blast as well, and Slick's able to pick up the kill. With the sonar scream. Turns on the ring of the teacher. And all of a sudden the defensive tower. Going to be uh, taking some serious pressure once again. Shell surf. Almost going to connect right there with silhouette. Where's the ba backup? Engineer is getting in there. As soon as engineer does show up. Oh now they got fade as well. Fade activating the reflection. And silhouette's in a world of trouble. Going to be coming in here right past. And there's the Burning Shadows. Shell Surf comes in. There's the Song of the Sea. Turret to actually finish him off. Skyzo picks up that kill. And Twin of Islands and his team off to a fantastic start. 7-1 and one in terms of hero kill score. Up 4,000 gold and experience. Of course, the uh, late game potential here from the Legion team. Not as strong with the second support and fate of that war beast that's uh even though archer tiger wasn't necessarily getting the best farm in that last game he still had some late game potential that scared the hellborn team and uh pebbles takes another burning shadows plus coal there in the middle lane but um yeah silhouette's just not getting the farm that she wants down here it, she needs to be up at 300 plus gold per minute she was going up against a suicide and fade takes another power throw in the middle lane as a pause is coming up once more and guys i'm going to take this pause to try to get rid of these hiccups so give me one second tried held my breath did it work maybe maybe indeed well the hellborn team they are uh up pretty well right now kezu 
unfortunately did do a little bit of timing out, perhaps a crash or something along those lines. But uh, maybe take this time to actually look over at the brackets real quick and see what's going on. I, I've heard there's been some upsets um, in today's matches, so maybe we can uh, see what exactly is going on. Complexity Gaming currently up 1-0 over Lions. Uh, trademark, I heard that they were 1-1 one one with FYKU. Um, but right now it's reading a forfeit from FYKU, and I know that's not the case because I was watching part of that game. QSQ357 currently tied up with DT Esports. That's 1-1. Uh, one and one. So all those games going on right now. Of course, the winner of this game... Could be uh, Stay Green or One Trick Pony. Going to be going on to play against the winner of Complexity Gaming and Lions Esports Club. Of course, Complexity up 1-0 in that series currently. And I might actually just open that up for a very, very brief moment. And it looks like in game number two, Complexity is up 5-1 uh, in terms of hero kill score at 15 minutes. And uh, they've got a pretty substantial advantage. Uh, looks like they might be finishing that one out relatively soon. Actually, take a look right here and hit monitor game. So, yeah, Cole up by about uh, seven hero kill scores. Looks like we're ready to go. Uh, Let's get it on. <laughs> uh, that was a little bit bad mannered. Not asking before you pause. A little bit bad mannered, but it looks like they're not ready just yet so gonna be going back into another pause once more let's take a look at these uh these heroes over here for one trick pony currently the gold per minute chart looks pretty dismal right 252 gold per minute for pharaoh 247 for pebbles and of course the silhouette down there at 222 uh going for a bottle on silhouette so strange actually to see a bottle on silhouette in addition to those red boots and the ring of the teacher that is all she is sporting. Not exactly sure what an Agnes is, but uh, whatever Keizu was murdered by is... Oh, okay. He might have been murdered by his girlfriend. That makes a lot more sense. Girlfriends are prone to murder people when playing too many video games. <laughs> I was thinking it was like a mountain troll. But uh, don't tell... Nobody tell Keizu I said that. Wow. That was... That would be rude to call his girlfriend a mountain troll. I don't even know what his girlfriend looks like. But, uh... <laughs> so, in the bottom lane, Keizu's actually done a pretty fantastic job against Zibby. Scoring two kills on him with the assistance of the uh, the Engineer. And, I believe... Uh, I think it was just the Engineer, actually, both times that um, they helped out down there. And, no, Fade came in once. That's right. But Keizu finishing up his own Steam Boots grabs a bottle and a Ring of the Teacher... With that, he's able to uh, do pretty damn well in terms of farm for himself here at 9 minutes into the game. 300 gold per minute. So not bad at all. Pharaoh finishes up his team boots up here in the suicide lane. But Pebbles in the middle is still not able to finish his own up. He can now, as he does actually buy a Gloves of the Swift and is flying that out to finish out his team boots. Fade with Reflection activated. Maybe looking to go in on Pebbles right here. There it is. The opener doesn't get the full opener, though. And, well, there's the uh, turret. As well as the keg. And down goes Pebbles. So even though he wasn't able to get the initial auto attack in with the Reflection, they added just enough damage there with the keg burning shadows. Cull turret. And they actually turn it around to get a second kill. Wow. Znui must have got caught a little bit out of position there. Okay, scratch that. A lot of it out of position. For Aluna to actually have gone down in that case. Alright, stay green. They're looking fantastic. They look like they want to make it into the winner's semifinals. Coming up here real soon. And we'll see if they're actually able to pull it off. Able to hold on to this lead. And able to convince One Trick Pony that uh, their time is done. Of course, only 10 minutes into this game. Things can change very, very quickly. Dr. What a revelation here. Just wants to make sure that he's not actually being spotted out when he does go into uh, the invis with the reflection. 
an engineer did wonk by, so made sure that he's not scouted out by an invis. Glacius just kind of hanging out down here. Architect could be in some trouble if engineer might go ahead and spawn him. But they're looking for a kill on to silhouette. Bubbles. Going to be going in right here. There's the energy field. Shell safe song of the sea. Kelp field. And auto attacks. Finish off silhouette. Archer Tiger TPing home. Poor guy. He was he was in the right place. Just wasn't there at the right time. His fade. Trying to go on to Pebbles. But Pebbles goes for the combo. There's the wrath of the Pharaoh. And not able to finish off fade before she gets the reflection off. Swindermelons will be able to jet on out of there. And uh, might even get ballsy and try to turn it around here. Top lane Tempest teaming up with Wretched Hag will actually be able to bring down the top tower. So yet another big, big win for the Stay Green team. Up nearly 10,000 experience and about 9,000 gold. Silhouette so returns down here to the bottom lane and uh, starts to put some pressure on to Keizu. Keizu will have to back up for fear of possibly being initiated on by one of these roaming supports but when your supports are both level four and only one of them has boots probably don't have a whole lot to worry about pharaoh coming up to the top lane they're gonna go deep onto pharaoh right now glacial blasts are there and oh. elemental minions have despawned they're, they're actually gonna pinch and this is gonna be bad news for glacius bad news in shoes burning shadows comes out there's the coal not even gonna use the coal the sonar scream is all that they needed and tempest well, he's just down here, still hanging on to that Elemental Void level 1. Hag's going to go in. There's the Burning Shadows on to Pharaoh. Batblast comes out. Where's the Elemental Void? Not going to use it. So in the end, Hag uses all of her abilities. Not able to bring down Pharaoh. Just a little bit too tanky with that Steam Boots in level 8. Keizu in the bottom lane, though. Man's up and one-on-one -on -one silhouette. And as we get closer to the 15-minute mark here... Um, you gotta really be wondering as actually there's a big kill on to Fusey. even with those illusion ruins just not going to be enough and and Swindermon's team is just getting out of control here the turret going to be able to slow Aluna Ghost Marchers comes in and uh, the Burning Shadows even connects right there they're up 13 kills at 13 minutes into this game and uh, I would not be surprised to see a 15 minute concede right now the late game potential of One Trick Pony is great but they have 220 or 206 gold per minute right now on their late game carry. So we'll have to see if they do want to stick in this game or if they're instead just going to try to drop into the uh, lower bracket and fight back from there. Of course, number six rated team here, my oh, one trick pony. So they uh, they had a pretty good shot and they showed us a 1 1 series. We'll see if they uh, do continue here. In the later stages of this game. Maybe. Maybe not. Let's go ahead and take a look up here. Tempest, how close is he to a portal key? He is, in fact, about 100 gold off. So this Minotaur camp will enable him to pick that one up. Hag picks up a Blessed Orb. Swindlebones finishes up his Ghost Marchers. He's working on a portal key of his own. 1,300 gold saved up. Push stick finished up here on Bubbles, whereas on the other team, they've got three sets of Steam Boots. Yep. Pharaoh Pebbles and Silhouette all have Steam Boots. They're going to catch Bubbles. Bubbles uses the Shell Surf. We'll be able to get out of there. A Portal Key on Engineer drops the Energy Field, and Engineer's actually in some trouble. So Skyzo is going to go down right here. Just caught way out of position. Pebbles wraps in some trouble. Nice Kelp Field. Going to be able to catch Aluna and Pebbles. Aluna uh, is going to be going down. Pebbles breaks it and will be uh, stunned, but is able to get away. Shell Surf comes in. Glacius is going to go down. Sonar Scream comes out, and Silhouette trying to use the Tree Grapple. Silhouette goes down. Pebbles, what's his fate going to be? He's trying to get out of there, but uh, nice jukes for now. Sonar Scream not going to connect, and Pebbles will be able to escape for now. Good Stalagmites able to keep himself in safety, and eventually he'll be able to get out of there. So in the end... Uh, they only lost Silhouette? No, that's not true. You might think because everybody else is alive. It's because it's a level 4 Glacius and a level 4 Aluna. They resurrect so fast you can barely even notice it. But, uh, well, unfortunately, they are quite low level. Don't know if they're going to be able to get their ultimates anytime soon. As the Legion team looks like they want to actually 
trying to get the deny. Not going to happen just yet. Burning Shadows canceled right there from F Swindle Melons. Fade their melons. Swindle fades. Swindle aid. Oh, wow, that's terrible. But uh, they're going to be going in. There's the Burning Shadows onto Pharaoh. Nice cat. Going to be able to hit two, but no follow up just yet. Uh, Tempest Z Freak actually goes for a push stick first rather than a portal key. So an interesting choice there. Wants to have the utility of being able to push out of Pharaoh's walls. But the pub train is activated here by One Trick Pony. All five members. They get an energy field on three right there, though. Shell Surf Song of the Sea comes in. Pharaoh goes down to the kelp field. Luna's going to be taking a fall here. Pebbles goes down. And all of a sudden, One Trick Pony is just in some terrible, terrible shape. Archer Tiger uses the only item he has, a homecoming stone, to try to get out of there and does succeed. Silhouette. She takes the Shell Surf. Body block coming in right here from Keizu. And there's the Burning Shadow. Silhouette does get hit. The Song of the Sea comes in. And 21 to 2 in favor of SG. GG well plays are coming out. Look at how fast that was responded to. And that is going to be it, guys. Well played to stay green. Congratulations to them on their victory in this series. And let me do one thing real quick. There we go. So we'll see if that pans out in just a moment. But congratulations to Stay Green on that. Uh, they they looked kind of rough in that second game. They, they were doing well, but unfortunately just could not contend with their opponent's uh, late game presence. And guys, before we do close this one out, we actually are going to be having Swindlebones come on to do a very quick uh, winner's interview here in just a moment. So I'm going to wait for him to actually get on and then give him a call so one more time guys big shout outs to the you for watching a huge shout out to s2 games for allowing Han to to uh happen and of course to complexity gaming for allowing Colcast to happen and for enabling me to be here I gotta, gotta add swell melons here. Give me a second. There we go. Okay. So should have melons on in just a moment here. Do to do to do to do, do. So guys. Really big shout out to uh, Complexity Gaming for allowing this to happen. Trying to get the Skype set up while doing the outro here. But you can check them out over at complexitygaming.com where Han Tour is on the front page. And there's a brand new Cole Han weekly breakdown. And let's go ahead and get this call going. Do -do -do. Hey, Melons. What's up? Hey, what's up? What's up, man? Not much. Congratulations on the win. Yeah, thank you. So, going into that match against One Trick Pony, I mean, they're the number six team out there right now. They've looked pretty damn good in the, the past few weeks, in the past few Han Tours. What were your expectations going into the series? Uh, we definitely expected... We Actually, I said to my team we were probably playing the best two teams outside of the ones that are like really good, which is you know the top three, but I thought that DRDZ and OTP were probably five and four. I think that One Trick Pony is probably the best out there that isn't you know, top three. Yeah. Um, it's a shame because we actually beat them last week too, and I really think they could, do, they could easily make the semis if they had an easier road, but uh, definitely expected a challenge. Um, they kind of let us off, I think, in that last game because they didn't pick a jungler. I was actually kind of a little worried. But then they didn't pick a jungler, and we have a lot of experience playing against those types of lineups. So I was a lot more confident after that because the second game kind of uh, had me a little worried. But we recovered nicely, so it's all good. Yeah, that uh, second game, you guys had an extremely aggressive lineup. And you yourself, I mean, you were 5-0-1. You were, you were making work happen, but you just weren't able to take it into the late game. You guys gave up at 23 minutes into the game. Mm hmm We, uh, there's people on the team just didn't, we just didn't want to keep playing. And, uh, it's normally in my experience better that if people on the team just don't, 
Like that, if you if you believe you've lost already, you've already lost. So it's better okay. to just go new and uh, and just you know move on from there. Yeah, keeping a positive mentality, of course, is extremely important. Now their lineup between games two and three, uh, very very similar. The only change was the War Beast being changed out for Glacius. I believe that's correct. Um, uh... Yeah. So Warby swapped out for Glacius. Otherwise, their lineup was identical. What really gave you guys the edge in Game Three as opposed to Game Two? Um, they didn't run a jungler, and we didn't run some weird lineup that I wanted to try. That okay. I think, that I think probably would have worked, but we were feeding, so it didn't work. But I, I've learned, and my team has said that um, we're just gonna have to go back to I'm just gonna play Pebbles and Fade, and that's it, and I'm not gonna innovate at all. <laughs> and that'll be that'll be the new strategy. There you Just go. Always the old strategy. So you're stepping away from the hard support role that is going to be going to Skyzo for the most part. Oh yeah, our, our roles are pretty set as they are. Okay. Um, we've found that these this probably works the best for us in all honesty, and uh, it it just it just it seems to flow a lot better when um, I'm playing Pebbles Fade and then Slicks is on hard carry because I feel like those are the two roles that both of us excel at. And it's kind of silly to like keep us both off of them, you know. Yeah. And uh, Kazu's Kazu is a lot to thank for that because he actually and Skyzo as well. Skyzo is switching to hard support. Obviously, no one really likes that. And uh, Kazu, of course, switching to suicide. So uh, their change really helped us out. So we were able to do that. Yeah, I mean, just small changes in lineups can yield massive results. You guys in the last season, uh, the last cycle. You're the first team to take a bust of three off of complexity other than Trademark Esports. You're the first team in, what, five months to take them in a best of three tournament series. And you're going to be going up against them once again. They just 2 owed Lions Esports. So tomorrow morning, or tomorrow afternoon, you guys are going to be playing them once again. What are your expectations? Um, I mean, I really plan. I obviously, you know, I want to win, of course, but I'm hoping that we win for sure. Um... I think a lot of people forget this, but we're actually the last team to take games off of TDM, too. We actually, it's funny, because before DreamHack, we came in with a ton of momentum, because we'd actually beaten Trademark 2-0 in consecutive tournaments. Mm -hmm. And we were doing really well, and then just kind of started falling apart since then. But I think we were starting to get our mojo back, and uh, Slicks has really, you know, been more ingrained in the roster. And, uh, I mean, we, all, we seem to have trouble with just not throwing against complexity, but I think that... <laughs> I think that we're the better team. It's just a question of whether or not we finish the games. But uh, I'm definitely hoping and expecting a win. And then uh, with luck, we'll be able to give Trademark a good show. <laughs> All right. Well, those are the matches that we're going to be looking at come tomorrow afternoon. Of course, the semifinals one is going to be Complexity Gaming versus Stay Green. And then uh, I'm not sure who won on the other side. It's going to be Trademark or FYKU versus QSQ or TTEs. Those games haven't come in just yet. Who do you think uh, would be the best series between those four teams? Uh, sorry, say the teams again. I was... TDM, FYKU, TDM? QSQ, and TTEs. I mean, assuming TDM doesn't lose this game, which they might, looking at the stats, um, I think they might be tilting a bit, but uh, I personally expect the TDM to just roll through. Uh, I haven't seen those other teams practice at all. And um, personally, I just think that there's... There's just such a large gap, not necessarily an individual skill, but in just team play, team cohesion, and drafting that I don't really think that... I, I, in all honesty, I think Faiku is probably the strongest team there outside of TDM, partly because I'm watching them beat TDM in Game 3 at the moment, <laughs> and partly because I think that their drafting is by far the best out of those four teams. They have a really good sense of the game, and... Um, uh, it's stuff I would draft if that. I hope that doesn't sound arrogant, but it's like it, it's really sound, and it puts them at least on an equal footing with the people they're playing against. All right. Well, Kyle, thank you very much for taking the time to come on for a victory interview. Any shout outs before we uh, shut this down? Um, you know, shout outs to the family and the team who are always supporting and being around, and of course the fans, the the many I have, luckily that uh, help me stay focused and continue to enjoy the game I've been playing for so long. And uh, we do have actually, uh, I was going to announce it today, but my team didn't want me to. But we, have, we, we will have some big news coming soon. Oh, coming soon. Coming soon, There yes. you go. All right, well, Swindle, thank you very much for taking the time. And uh, best of luck tomorrow and in the future Haunt Tour cycles. Oh, thank you very much, and I uh, appreciate you casting us. Yeah. It doesn't happen very often.
<laughs> Always happy to be here, man. Take it easy, and we'll uh, catch you later. All right, see you around. Thanks. All right, guys. Well, that was Swindle from SG letting us know what was going on a little bit in that series. But as I did mention, Complexity 2-0 to Lions Esports over there on Honcast. And right now, I believe Honcast is taking a look at TDM versus FYKU. So if you have not checked that out just yet, you should head over there to Honcast.com. But before that, one more big round of shout-outs to S2 Games for making Hon Tour possible. Complexity Gaming for allowing me to be here with Colecast. And, of course, to the Hon Tour admins, we have Milk Fat, uh, Inkland... Mr. Old Shadow, Roland, Snoopy, uh, Chuck64. Without them, this would, of course, not be possible. And, of course, to the Cryo9 in-house league. If you guys have not checked that out, make sure to go do that. There's threads all about it on the forums. And make sure to watch all the players as they stream that. Thank you for all of you being here. And, of course, before you go, make sure to check out the info section below at twitch.tv slash complexityhon where you can check out all the info about Complexity, the players, the organization, myself, and easy social media links. Guys, we're out for the day. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.